everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to do a little something different. We're going to be talking about seeds and how I'm going to store my seeds uh, before I get ready to plant them uh, in a couple months or so through our, our grow light system. Before I get started, uh, there is a variety of places that you guys can get seeds. A lot of these seeds are new to me, some I'm familiar with, but I just kind of want to go over what seeds that I bought this year, which ones I I'm, want I'm to try, and then just the places that you guys can get seeds. Uh, you guys can get them at the grocery store. I know Walmart has them, Lowe's has them, any garden flower shop has them, grocery stores have them. So I just wanted to go through, through some of the, um, the name brand places that you guys can get your seeds. Uh, Gurney's is a good source that carries seeds. Garden Trends is another place that carries seeds. I didn't get any seeds from them this year, but they do have some really nice stuff as well as flowers and vegetables. Burpee. Burpee is another one. I did get a lot of seeds from Burpee and Walmart sells a lot of Burpee seeds as well, just in smaller packages. Uh, when you get them from big companies like this, you can get them in bulk um, by the pound, but um, Walmart does carry them in the packages. Johnny's is another place uh, that I ordered a lot of seeds for from and I continue to order a lot of seeds. They've got uh, fruits and vegetables and all sorts of good stuff, lots of flowers. Uh, so this is a good place to um, order some of your seeds as well. Uh, they have two different catalogs, which I've got. And then Norris is one that um, my family has been ordering their strawberry plants and uh, raspberries and blueberries for many, many years. So we get this one um, for our strawberry plants and that sort of thing. And I'll go into detail a little bit about the strawberry plants that we purchased for this year. We ordered 100 plants. Um, and we'll talk about the seasons and that sort of thing. Um, first, I want to just talk about the vegetables that I got, and then I'll talk about the flowers that I got, and then we'll talk about the strawberries. But before I get into that, I do want, oh, there's also Harris Seeds and Bentley Seeds. Those are also great companies too that you guys can utilize as well. And I'll link them below if you guys wanna, uh, just a reminder of where to get your seeds. This is a kit that I got, and I got this idea from my husband who stored a lot of RC cars you know parts from so I thought it would be a great place to package my seeds um, so the ones that are smaller I can use this this um, this tote but then anything that is a bigger bulk I'll just put it in this tote here uh, so what this is is we got this from Amazon it was about $40 I think you can I think we got um, his other one from Marshall's which was a lot cheaper um, but it's a plastic little tote because you can lock it up and it just carries so we can take this to wherever we go and then they come with I believe 20 containers they're just plastic they open up you can set your packages of seeds in and close them up and then store them and we also did some labels here too we printed off some labels just got some labels from Walmart and then we're just going to attach the labels when I'm all done we'll put the labels in so we'll be able to see what we what we have so I really like this system. This is the first time I'm using this system, which I really like. And I can just, it's a great little kit and caboodle to kind of just bring up to the garden. Um, and everything is kind of, you know, airtight. And I think it'll store well as well. So, all right. So let's get into the seeds. The seeds that I got, I did get them from a variety of places. Uh, and I just kind of got them. If you guys are looking to get some seeds, I would definitely start getting your seeds now. Uh, some of these companies, we did have three to four weeks delay. They were on back order. Uh, I know our growth light system took about a month or so before that came in. So like Burpee, if you like Burpee and you're ordering that online, that may take a few weeks to come in. I don't know how it is now, uh, but Walmart does carry Burpee seeds. So, but you guys are going to want to get on top of that as soon as possible, just to make sure that you have the seeds that you are looking for. Some of the flower seeds and some of the, the, the specialties that I wanted, I couldn't get, they were out of order. So unfortunately I missed out on some things, but I did get a lot of things and that's why some of my uh, seeds are new because I had to try different varieties because I couldn't get the ones that I liked. So we'll kind of go through them. Um, I just got a small package of uh, radishes burpee. We don't do a whole lot with them, but I got those. Microgreens are the first time that I've used that I'm planting them this year. So I'm gonna grow them under, under the grow light. So I got these from Walmart and these at the dollar store. So I'm gonna kind of see, there's quite a bit in here. So I'm gonna kind of see which one 
uh, which brand I like the best. So we're gonna we're gonna plant these as well. Uh, carrots. I usually get these from Harris Seeds, and I get a gigantic package, um, but I didn't this this year. So I just got some multiple colors, and then I did order from. I oh I did got one, one kind from Harris, not the one that I typically get, but. And I have an older pack too, somewhere in there. Um, I can use these seeds up to a few years old. I've used seeds, the cucumber seeds, um, like within five years, six years, and they still come up with a good like 60%, um, you know, rate. So, you know, you can still get by with using seeds that are two to three years old for sure. Uh, let's see here. I got some onions. I always get the just you know your your sets your onion sets um, And they do they do okay, but I want to try them out with just the seeds uh, And see how I do with um, with growing those I did get some from Johnny's and I got some from from Walmart So we'll kind of compare to see which ones I like better on those uh, Green beans Bean pike. I always get bean pike green beans. The reason why is when you leave your green beans on the vine and typically they will start to get large and that's the time that people don't like to eat them and they kind of become bitter and they're not good for canning. Bean pike are the beans that are going to stay long and slender and they will not get fat. I have been using these for quite a long time and I these are my number one beans. So if you can get bean pike from Harris you're gonna have long, beautiful, slender green beans that taste fantastic and they are not gonna get fat on you. So definitely got those. I did do some purple. Uh, just be mindful, anytime you get any sort of colored beans, when you put them in hot water, they are gonna turn back to green. So it's more of an aesthetic if you're using them for a cold purpose, eating them or throwing them to a salad, but they will go back to their green state. Um, and then I got some yellow beans. I usually order these from Harris, but I forgot to. So I quickly grabbed some from just Walmart, just in case uh, I couldn't get any. I would at least have some yellow beans. Corn, I usually don't get corn. I usually don't buy corn because my sister has a farm. We grew up on a strawberry farm. So she usually has the butter and sugar corn and we usually just grab it from her. But we're gonna try to do the corn this year. We do have a lot of raccoons that tend to eat our corn. But we'll try to see if we can at least salvage a few corns and then at least we'll be able to harvest the corn stalks to make uh, fall decorations with. So we're gonna try it and we're gonna kinda see how we do. Lettuce, we just got some burpee lettuce. Uh, I like the leaf lettuce, but I found that last year just getting the romaine lettuce was fantastic. There wasn't any bitterness to it. It was easy to cut, it was clean. It was less work for me to have to do by cleaning each individual tiny little leaf. Uh, so I really like the burpee, the, the romaine uh, lettuce. So I got a lot more of that. I got another microgreen in there. Um, but we did get a little bit of some Caesar leaf lettuce, so we'll just, we always like to have that in the, the summertime. Uh, next we have is tomatoes. Uh, the best tomatoes that I ever found was the Defiant tomatoes, and those are blight resistant, and those have done very, very well, especially up in our northern area where we tend to get, a, you know, sometimes a lot of rain, and then we end up getting a lot of blight and so those were resistant to them and we had good production with them. I didn't get any blight, um, any defiant tomatoes. We used to have a grower, but she went out of business. So uh, I'm just ordering them online. We had a dry summer last year and didn't have any problems with any blight issues. You know, you always wanna make sure that you prune and keeping everything off the bottom uh, to ensure that you don't get any blight. But we had a really good, successful uh, tomato season. I was able to utilize the tomatoes and make a lot of spaghetti sauce, salsa, um, and just just the, utilize the tomatoes in, in everyday salads. So I did get some from Burpee. We did get the Roma tomatoes, and that's what I'm going to use to can my tomatoes. Uh, we got some cherry tomatoes here. So, of course, those are always fun to just pick off and eat and add to salads. Uh... Some more cherry tomatoes here. Uh, we don't, I don't, different kinds of names on here that I'm not, I don't really remember exactly the types that I got, but I got a few different um, varieties. So I'm just going to pick and choose which ones that I wanna grow. Obviously I can't grow them all, 
but maybe a few on uh, each cell of, of every variety just to kind of see which ones that I like. I did plant the Roma tomatoes last year and I did do the cherry tomatoes and I like them. So we're gonna do them as well. I do have some beef steak ones in here as well, so I'm gonna plant those. Next, we have the cucumbers. And so we just have the burpless cucumbers from Burpee and then I have another organic um, cucumber from Harris Seeds. These are the absolute most adorable things. My sister-in-law, they're called lemon cucumbers. They're from Johnny Seeds. And what they are is they look literally like a round lemon, but it's a cucumber. So it's yellow. It has the same taste as a cucumber, but it's just small and it's aesthetically pleasing and unique. So I really liked it. It was the first time that I saw it. So I, I grabbed some of these and I'm gonna give those a try. There's also one thing about the tomatoes too and I'm gonna grab some of these seeds, but my friend had one. It kind of looks like a jack-o'-lantern flower. The jack-o'-lantern flowers, if you know what they are, they're orange and you, they're just very soft kind of material. Well, this tomato is encapsulated in this kind of same thing. It's like a little, a little folded leaf and you kind of open it up and then you have the tiny little tomato that's inside of it. And it tastes really, really sweet. And I think when it's right it falls to the ground but those are also unique so i'm going to try to grab myself some of those seeds so that we can kind of look to see what those look like as it gets closer to fall i was that was uh pretty interesting and i was pretty impressed with that one and the taste as well so that one's always fun uh next we have some squash so we're uh, we're going to do some zucchini and we're going to do some just regular squash and some spaghetti squash so we're going to utilize those we do a lot of cooking with that. Peas, we're gonna do some ginger sap peas. And I got some more peas from Garden Trends and then some more peas from Johnny Seeds. So I got a variety of peas and I'm not too fussy with peas. I'll do some, you know, the, um, the, the snap peas and you know, we're typically like any sort of peas so I'm not too, too picky on that. I have some specialty pumpkins, uh, some flat stackers here, and then we have just a couple varieties of different types of pumpkins so that I'm hoping, I think there's some light pastel pink ones in there, some white ones in there, some warded bumpy ones. My sister also does a lot of pumpkins. She has several acres of pumpkins and we picked for like eight hours last year with a crew of like 20 of us. So I don't need to really plant that much, but I do want to plant enough. It'll be fun for the kids and be fun for some decorations. So I'm excited to see how those, how those do. And next we have peppers. I did a lot of peppers and I love peppers and I was able to dry my peppers, my chili peppers last year and make chili powder, which I was hoping would last throughout the winter, but it hasn't. So I need to do more of them. So I got all kinds of peppers. We have just the regular hot peppers I got from Burpees. Uh, I believe I got these from Walmart. We have the Lemon Dream, the Italian. Let's see what else we have. We have the uh, cayenne peppers. We have some sweet peppers here. And then we have some more sweet peppers from Johnny's. Hot peppers. We have some sweet sunrise bell peppers. Some more sweet peppers. These are all different varieties that I got. It's just gonna be too cumbersome for me to go over and show you guys each picture that I got, but I have quite a bit of peppers that I'm going to choose from. Just the sweet peppers, the bell peppers, the hot peppers, chili peppers. So we'll be able to do a lot of uh, fun things with that sort of thing. And then I'm gonna do some spices. I haven't done spices. Usually I get parsley or oregano, sage. I can get them in little kitten caboodles um, at the flower shop, kind of like your Italian you know, um, assortment or, uh, so I'm going to grow these from seed and I'm going to kind of see how I do. So I have cumin, I have some chives, I have parsley and oregano, and I'll probably still pick up some sage and some, uh, another, a few other, um, spices. I'm going to, I do have some raised beds, so I'll probably utilize one of those raised beds just for the spices. And then I'm hoping to dry as many as I can and then just preserve them and use them for, for the year. So I'm pretty excited about that. Okay, and so I just wanted to talk a little bit about the strawberries that we purchased and we use Norse and this has been a long time 
that the family has utilized this company for our fruit. Like I said, I grew up on a strawberry farm for over 15 years and we we got all of our strawberries, our raspberries, our blueberries from this company and done very, very well. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the strawberries that we ordered and kind of some of the information. So this is a really good book because if you look here, it's basically grades your strawberry. So it looks at the berry size, the flavor, the quality, the firmness, and the resistance to, um, to uh, mold and that sort of thing, and the zones that are best grown in your area. So the ones, they also have the early season, the early to mid season, as all the way down. So you're gonna wanna tra tra keep track of when your last frost date is because you're gonna wanna make sure that you get the, the strawberries that will be able to grow in your season and not be affected by the frost. The ones that we've done very well with is called the Annapolis, and that's the one that I got this year. I got 100 plants of those. These are, they're good in flavor. Honestly, I think that they're very sweet. Um, they're very big, so they're robust. So we used to get these a lot and help to fill the, the quartz up. They're nice size. They're not just very, very small. They do very, very well in the second and third year. Um, so we, this was one of our main ones that we had. We also had All Star and Sparkle, which is more mid-season. So what we did is we planted an early season. We got our first picking usually around July 4th. That took us into the end of July. And then we had another one that came in a, a little bit later in the season, early to mid-season. So that carried us out for another few weeks until our raspberries and our blueberries were ready to be harvested. So we wanted to kind of have a a continual flow of fruit at the stand. So uh, definitely, I love the Annapolis. The flavor is really good. I recommend that one. That one's very easy. The flavor is good. The size is just, it's a really uh, beautiful size. So we placed the order for 100, so we're gonna see how, how those do in our raised beds. We did get some a few years ago, but the deer came and they uprooted them all. So they didn't have time to be able to um, establish their roots underneath the ground. The deer kept taking them up, so we'll have a gated area around our, our raised beds, and hopefully the production will be a little bit better. So just want to talk a little bit about that. But this is great because it has the raspberries, the blueberries, um, your zone, everything. This this is a really good one to help to kind of limit it, which which variety works best for you guys. I think I'm going to stop right now. I, talk, I didn't realize how long this was going to be. So if you guys want to know about the flowers that I picked and how I'm going to to store all these in the containers and label them then watch the next video the next video will be on that until next time thanks i hope you guys learned something it was helpful have a great day bye